Good morning. How's everybody doing today? I see the nervousness in some of your eyes as I walk up with a microphone and you're thinking, oh gosh, he's going to start asking questions. And yes, I am today, but it's an easy one, okay? So I want us all, I'm going to ask some of us to share, but I want us all to think about this question. So we're going to start with Allison to give everybody a chance to think. But what is your favorite Christmas song or album? But I also want you to think about why is that the case? Allison? My favorite Christmas song is uh, the Christmas song, but most people know it as chestnuts toasting on an open fire. You know that one, right? Mm -hmm. Nat King Cole. And the reason is because my dad here is on the drums, uh, and my mom, of course, is here. But every Christmas morning, we would start with that song, and we'd have the stairs blocked out, like no peeking, like you can't go down the stairs until it's time, until that song plays. And then we were able to go and, you know, celebrate Christmas as a family, open gifts and all that. That's great. So the good memories that come from yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. So who else is going to also sing their Christmas song after hearing Allison sing hers? Okay, who is going to be my brave contestants or who's going to share? Who's going to be brave today? I want a couple people to share. What is their favorite Christmas song and why? All right. Go ahead and tell us. Silent Night. And why? Uh, because you feel that peacefulness when you hear it. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Anybody else? I don't actually know the name, but it's the weather outside is frightful. And <laughs> I like it because we would like clean the kitchen and sing that song. And it's just like just a feel good song. I love it. Thank you so much. Let's go to the other side. Who has some favorite Christmas songs? Oh, do you have a favorite Christmas song? No? Maybe behind you. I think she does. What's your favorite Christmas song? Oh, Christmas tree, because I get to think about um, the Christmas tree and celebrate with my family. Very good. I love it. All right, let's get one more. One more Christmas song. Somebody over here. What is your favorite Christmas song? Santa Claus is coming to town. I love it. And do you have a reason why? Because me and my sisters love to run around. <laughs> Just in circles around the living room? I love it. Me and my brothers like to do that too. <laughs> I love some of those choices. They're definitely some of my favorite. My favorite Christmas album or song is actually Patty Noonan's Irish Christmas or Christmas Time in Ireland. Has anybody ever heard or seen this album before? We had like two people at the last mass know it. Definitely not the most well-known songs. But I love this one, so it would be playing almost on repeat at my parents' home growing up. And every time I hear it, I played it on pretty much repeat this past week while I was working. And it just brings me back to the time with family. And actually, if anybody wants to, we're all going to my parents' house afterwards this evening. Come and see me in the narthex for the address, and I'm sure this album will be play being played on repeat at my parents' house today. But I love Christmas music especially because it just brings us so often back to the magic of Christmas. It brings us back to those moments, those good feelings. I hope all of us have had those chance. And usually there's one or two songs that really does it for us. And it's not just Christmas music. I think it's music in general can really change how we have an, or how we approach life or how we see our life. I think about when I'm having just an absolutely terrible day. I get in my car, I crank up my favorite song, and immediately my out view is not so gloomy. Immediately I see a little bit more hope in my life. All of a sudden, even though nothing really changes, all of a sudden my mood changes. I think, I think music gets to the heart of what it means to be joyful. And on this third Sunday of Advent, on Gaudete Sunday, or Pink Sunday, we look at the promised joy, that God has promised joy. So we're in our third week of our homily series of promises. So if you haven't been with us the first couple of weeks, we started off in the first Sunday of Advent with the promise revealed, that God has been revealing his promise, this promise of a Savior, from the beginning of time, and it's going to be a personal Lord and Savior. Last week, we looked at the promise foretold, that he foretold his promise by the crazy man out in the desert, and it will fulfill, the promise will fulfill our wildest dreams. Our lives are going to be different because of Jesus Christ. And then finally this weekend, we look at the promised joy, 
that the promise that is coming, the promised Savior, is going to bring joy into our lives. Now, not to be pedantic or split hairs, but there's a reason why we chose it to be promised joy and not promised good feelings or promised happiness or promised elation or whatever you else want to fill in there. And the reason why we look no further than our first reading from the book of Zephaniah. I love saying that name, Zephaniah. I want to meet some kid named Zephaniah one day. And I don't think it's an Old Testament prophet. I don't think this is the first book we open up our Bibles to when we want to read scripture. It is in the Old Testament, as I said. It's a short book. It's only three chapters. But I think we all, at some point, should take a time to read it. You could read it in about 10 minutes today if you really want to. But the book of the prophet Zephaniah is a prophet in the years 600 B.C. in Jerusalem. And for all our biblical historians here in the crowd, they'll know in the 600 B.C.s is when Babylon came and conquered Israel. So when the Babylonians came and took over Jerusalem and captured them and sent them back to Babylon, the people who had any means, had any influence, were captured and put into exile. And everybody else was left in Jerusalem and became the slaves of the Babylonians. But it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen all of a sudden they woke up one day and saw the Babylonians coming over the hill to conquer them. It was a slow process that began with Israel not worshiping the one true God. They started worshiping the false gods of Babylon. And then the influence of Babylon creeped in. And then all of a sudden the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, he was able to put a puppet king on on the kingdom of Jerusalem and control Jerusalem and over time completely take it over and conquer it. And it's within this that the uh, the prophet Zephaniah is writing. And what we hear today is at the very end of the book. And what he says is, Rejoice, O Israel! Be glad and exalt Jerusalem, for the Lord is near. And we hear this knowing the context of which he's writing in. And I'm thinking, this guy is crazy. This guy should be institutionalized. Or he knows something else. And I think that's exactly what we look at today. He understands joy. Because joy is a choice that we can make. Because joy is this recognition, this prevailing sense that God is with us. Let me say that again. Joy is a prevailing sense that God is with us. I'm not one to define, usually in my homilies. I don't like it. But this is important for us to understand joy and what the promised joy truly is. It's this recognition or this knowledge that God is constantly with you and with me. So often in our lives, we chase happiness or good feelings. I do it all the time. We like to feel good. We like to feel happy. We chase after it. Sometimes it really works out for us. It's great because joy and happiness are connected. Other times it's not because it's so often happiness and good feelings is so dependent upon the situation that we're in. The environment in which we're in, the people we're around, what's going on in our family, at work, a lot of the time, we can't control it at all. It's kind of given to us by what we're doing. But joy is something a little bit deeper, that choice that God is with us even in the difficulties, even in the sorrow, but also in the happiness and in the good times. G.K. Chesterton, 20th century, he was a convert to Christianity. He said that joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian. The gigantic secret of the Christian. I love it. Because he was saying, so he's writing from, he was an atheist, agnostic, and became Christian. And he was saying, if you look back, you have the pagan gods of Rome and Greece. And what you see is you have to please the gods if they're going to help you. Because they really don't care. Or if you look at atheism, modern day atheism, there's really no hope. Because depending on what card you are dealt in life, that's the situation you're dealt with. And so G.K. Chesterton is saying, but joy is this recognition that God is with us. That all of a sudden, it's not just the chances in life, but the recognition that God is still in our, in our midst. And that's why I started with music. Because I'm sure there's at least one person here that's saying, you're a liar, Father. There's not that much big of a difference between happiness or good feelings and joy. But that's why I encourage each of us to think about our favorite song and the reason why. Because as we think about it, or we hear the song, or there's other things in life that do this, our, our lot in life doesn't change. The situation we're in is still the exact same as it was before. When I'm having a terrible day, and I get in my car and turn on my favorite song, the day is still the same. But all of a sudden, it's touching at an aspect of joy in my life. 
It's touching at something deeper than just the situation I'm in. Just like I said, music and other things have that ability to do that. It's that prevailing sense that God is with us. So we started off three weeks ago with this recognition that God has been revealing this promised joy, this promised Savior from the beginning of time. We then saw that he is going to fulfill our wildest dreams. And this week, we take this moment on this Gaudete Sunday and rejoice in the joy that God is going to send us.